the cruelty of mankind, the darkness of man's heart. It's not only to take another human being to treat him like this, but the man that, that was the Son of God. Satan, who beguiled the serpent and master the grave, mankind now is finding instrument of sin. A willing vessel to yield his head and his heart to the dark nature of sin. We know the same there. How could it be? If we read over, you know, if we read over there what they did to Jesus, how they scourged him. And how did they mock him? How did they strip him down? I believe it. Sit in his face, blindfolded him, put the crown of thorns upon his head, smote him with the reed. It was mankind's darkest hour. We see the creature turn on the creator. The clay turn on the fall. To me, it seems unimaginable. And yet, it was his destiny. It's just what Christ came for. No wonder he cried, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Even those that drove the spikes in his hand, Jesus, would have freely have saved their souls if they had called on him. It was his destiny, Calvary was his direction, and the redemption of the creature, his ultimate goal. Achieve the goal he will, for his victory was already won. He came to lay his life down. He said, I lay my life down, I'll take it up again. I have power to lay it down. He said, I have power to take it up. No one take up it from me. I believe Jesus hung on that cross. And I believe he endured that pain and suffered till the last second his body could hold out. And then he just dismissed his spirit. He dismissed. The veil and the temple rent from the top to the bottom. Signifying the way was open for all mankind to have salvation. Oh, praise God. Satan and the Sanhedrin were cheering. They were deceived by the wrong imagination. They were losing them. Isaiah the prophet proclaimed the victor's song in Isaiah 50, chapter number 7. For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flame in speaking of Christ. And I know that I shall not be ashamed. Jesus knew three days 
Savior who was going to resurrect himself and ascend to the Father with that atoning blood. And those the same black-hearted creatures that held him to the cross. I believe if they had came after that and asked for forgiveness and said, Save me, Lord, he's a Savior. Can I tell you, they're still 
folks in the world today that are like that little one. They're so black hearted. Probably only Jesus can love them. I don't know. Think about it. Verse number 35, it says, and the people stood by holy. Now, it's the uh, footnote in my Bible. I want to read it my soul feel about it. It says, Jesus crucified is a true touchstone revealing what the world is. The people stood by holy. How? Installed it in them. The rulers who wanted religion. But without a divine Christ crucified for their sins. They would be believed in Without Jesus. Wow. That still ain't soft. Revile. The brutal amongst them mocked and railed. The conscious sinner prayed. The covenants sat down before the cross and played their sordid game. The cross is judgment of this world. Then it gives a reference to John 12. I'll read it to us now. John 12, 31 through 33. Now is judgment. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I. If I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what day you should die. And then, of course, in our text, verse 36 and 37, he was, there was disrespect and unbelief. <clears throat> the soldiers mocked him, coming through and offering him, saying unto him, They didn't believe him. Be king of the king, say by say. And here's the great Bible prayer. <coughs> Father, forgive them. <coughs> Jesus always started out praying, Father. Praying to God the Father. God the Father always heard Christ Jesus pray. And I've said it many times, and it's a, it's a verse that is real to my heart. When Jesus stood at Lazarus' tomb before he prayed, he said, Father, thank you that you hear me, that you always hear me. I'm glad that I was of God. Give up. 
up the ghost but three days later he arose from the tomb. This very day, six hours after he was hung on the cross, around three feet in, Joseph of Mary Messiah comes on the cross, begging Pilate for the body. Pilate tells him, you man, the body. He takes the body, he cleans the body of Jesus, they wrap it, they got to get ready. The, the Sabbath's coming up, it's going to be at 6 p.m. They've got to get this done. Because the high Sabbath song. At uh, 6 p.m. that night, life, it lies for 6 p.m. the next day. The Jews, they got these customs. It had to be done, it got done. He's in the tomb. We could study it out. Three nights and three days. That's what Jesus said. As John was in the belly of a whale, so was the son of man be. Three days later he rose from the tomb. He descended unto the Father with the atoning blood of his sacrifice on Calvary. How did he cry, Father, forgive them? God bless He knew what was done. Oh, God. Forgiveness was then freely offered to all mankind. All mankind. The sin that has been made. The only obligation was to accept his forgiveness. Believe on him with their heart and turn from their sin. <coughs> That was their only obligation to be saved. Maybe some of them were, who knows? Jesus was paying for the very sin he was hanging on the cross, beholding in his eyes. Every type of sinner that he looked upon, that he was looking at when he was hanging on the cross. He was paying for their sins. Not only for their sins, folks, but for yours and mine. For our sins. He, he justified us through. Hallelujah. Father, forgive them. And, and I thought about this stuff. How could a father forgive the dead of his own son? How can a father forgive the death of his only son? Like a father would be bad. Jesus is hanging on the cross. The only way, the only way God, I believe, can forgive the death of his only son is through his son. That's the only way. He sees them through his son. He addresses his prayer to the Father. For there is none higher than the Father. He addresses the prayer of the Father because none other can forgive but the Father. Acts 13, 38, 39 says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Law well, of Moses could do it. Jesus Christ's blood, his holy blood, hallelujah, that's what they mean. Boy, God. Father, forgive them. Then he said, for they don't know what they do. And I have to think, Lord, I've pondered on this for two days. They know not what they do. They know not what they do. All sin is an element that all sin has an element of ignorance in it. But not holy. Not completely. Amen. All sin has in it the element of ignorance, but not holy ignorance. 
as some modern nations of earth today, the ignorant.
the forgiveness of enemies is a Christian duty. That hit me pretty hard. When I when I come home from over yonder, I have some bitterness in my heart. I used to play some bad to die. Down I hate it. God help me with that. Forgiveness of enemies is a Christian duty. We have enemies tonight. As Christians, we have enemies out here in the world. There's people that hate us. Sometimes it's hard to forgive them. It's hard. It's, it's not easy to be like Jesus. I'm, I'm right now the hope you got something out of that, but just this for information, forgive. We're talking about forgiving. I just wrote this down. Forgive is mentioned fifty six times in forty eight verses in your King James Bible. The first mention of forgive is Genesis chapter number fifty, verse number seventeen. So shall you say to the Joseph, forgive. I pray thee now the trespasses of thy brethren and their sins, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespasses of the servants of, uh, of the God of thy father, and Joseph well, when they spake unto him. Now we know that the law of first mention tells us that the first time the word mentioned in the Bible. Generally speaking, it carries that thing throughout the rest of the Bible. Right? Here they are praying for forgiveness. Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass. We pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servant. And then the last mention of forgiveness in your Bible was John, 1 John, 1 9. Listen to this. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and good to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As we stand. Oh, what a sight. <coughs> Jesus Christ, I Father, forgive them. Well, they know not what they do. And then the last mention of forgiveness, the word uh, forgive, forgiveness in the Bible, forgive. If we can pray a person, we pray one of the other, to forgive a person, to clean. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much tonight. Thank you, Lord, for these words.